welcome back to the garage. More on the Corvette. This is another thing from Vet Lights. They uh, sent over this time their front corners, I guess they're called. And these are these are super cool. If you watch one of my previous videos with the side marker from them, it took a boring red standard bulb and just blew it up. Super bright, super clean looking, new. It just like takes the Corvette to like, okay, it's 2021. Let's do this. Um, so what we have here now is this guy. This is a smoke front corner. This would be the driver's side. I've already done the passenger side to work out all the bugs and explain this to you in the best way I possibly can. So if we look here, these are the ones that go kind of like, like that on the front and replacing this with this. And it's not only just a smoked housing. Um, this does two things. On this portion here where your daytime running lights would be on in a amber color, if you those will still stay the same, they're LED. But if you um, flip on your headlights, it turns it into a white, like ovally looking shape there. So that's a little neat little upgrade there. The other thing it does is the blinker turn signal when you flip it on, it does this like motion move. It, it moves across there kind of kind of like so. I'll show you all of it here. I'll plug some clips in throughout this whole thing as uh, we do it. Um, I'll, I'll start probably here. I'll show you the stock original version, what it does, what it looks like, and then you can go back and see. Surprisingly, um, you, you might be like me. I really didn't even know what it did on the front other than it, it blinked. And I knew C5s always had like a, a daytime running light that was kind of amber looking type thing. And some people say it looks like the Batmobile, which I agree. It does kind of got that like, you know, look that has two outriggers and amber. But this will change that a little bit. And they also give you free resistors with it that you just stick up in there on the housing. So let's get this going here. Uh, you don't really need a lot of tools. I got it all done with um, a ratchet and um, a, a little driver as well. I do have the car jacked up though so I can move the wheels freely and also get up underneath to the inspection type area. And I do have a light if that, that'll help you out. But this is one of the tougher ones as far as like just nitpickiness and you got to get in there and mess with things but let me show you it's not hard it's just like you got to work through some there's not a lot of room in there so here we go So as I said, my car is jacked up here. We're going to do the driver's side for this video. There's our bulb and we're going to kind of loop under here. I already have my light in place so you can see. We're basically going to be removing this thing here and the um, there's a little like L-shaped cover in here. They are all going to be done with this guy here. It is seven millimeter right there, sorry. Got a seven millimeter one of those and you can use a socket, you can use whatever. I found that the little quarter inch drive though is fine. These aren't torqued or anything like that. We'll start taking all those off. Just stay organized with this. I take off the, what you wanna call it, the air dam first and then the inside part next. Air dam is off, four screws, set it aside. One seems to be a different size. Not that it totally matters, but uh, I know the outer ones are larger. Now if you look up in here, we've got one, two, at least three more, four more on the little bracket there. Or the, I'm sorry, the little L-shaped piece that's up in there. So get those off and then that piece slides out and then we have some pretty good access. I'm kind of going to guide you up through here. This right here, if you can see, that's our brake cooling duct. This is underneath after we've removed everything and you can see actually up there. That's the bottom of the headlight there. So we kind of come up, and there it is. 
Now, this is driver's side, so point of reference, you're going to be looking at the three bolts. Now, this is the way I found it easiest to do it. I mean, there's a lot of different methods and things, but, uh, you know, some people actually take the top headlight out to get to it. I mean, whatever works for you, but I like this way the best, at least it seems to be the easiest. This bolt right there on the end, that one there, and that one there, that allowed me to have access and uh, not necessarily remove, there's an extra bolt on the inside that's tougher to get to, and I didn't have to do that. The other thing you do is there's a spring. Let me see if I can set this here and remove this. There's a spring right here for some reason to retain it all. It just hooks up here. There's like a little eyelet up in here it's hanging on. It's just a, I don't really know what it does, honestly, other than Maybe it keeps it from falling if maybe there was a problem or they found that it didn't fully support itself in the bumper. I don't know. So you take that out too and then just rehang that. So I'm going to get these three bolts out. They're basically screws. And then that'll allow us to uh, start removal here. And then I'm actually going to show you too. There's a little trick you can do to get a little more access. You just move this uh, brake duct out of the way up front. So screws out inside like i said those three end ones and then we can that's most of it right there so we're getting there with those three screws out what this allows you to do is sort of do like a you can push in from the outside and you can see it it pretty much comes loose there and you can actually reach up and just start pulling this guy out of there it kind of just falls out of the little house there's like a housing that's around it basically if you see here i'm kind of now i'm reaching through the hole where i just had this thing and then this is very tricky with one with two hands little there it goes and then it just comes out like that so i'm going to move the camera here and pull this out of here and then i'll show you on the front kind of where we're at I actually saw this on another YouTube channel, how to do this. Like, just, I mean, there's 18,000 different videos on how to change the bulbs, how to take the housings out. But you can see this is that support right there for it. And like I said, we didn't take out the tricky bolt, which is right there. And it's actually a bigger head. Um, a lot of people say you can get to it from underneath here. And the trick was basically you take this brake cooling duct here you can see it moving and you just sort of push down and get stuck in there and now I have access through there that'll come into play as you're putting this back together it's nice to have this extra hole and then that brake duct just you just push it back up in there and that's it it's not really that crazy I was kind of nervous I'd be getting into something I didn't want to but the other thing too you have to do is remove those two uh, bulbs in there because the sockets on there are going to plug into the new wiring on the new bulb. So I'm going to undo those bulbs, kind of prepare the new one here, and uh, then go from there. But we're moving right along now. A couple tips here I learned on doing the other one. Number one was the brake duct thing. Number two, I left the plastic on just because I didn't want to scratch this new light. You can leave it on for most of the time, and once it's in place, you can kind of remove it. The other thing I would highly recommend you do is plug all of this in while you can, whether it's not on the outside, because you can't, I really didn't want to shove this through that hole there. I brought the light back up through the bottom. So once it's in there, plug these in before you bolt them in, because even though you're, you're plugging that, like say that big one into the big bulb socket there, this factory bulb socket still screws into here and it's kind of tricky to do if it's all already installed i made that mistake on the other side so get everything hooked up before you do your final final bolt in here so i'm going to get this guy up in there now and then we'll uh start testing it out and make sure everything works So we are in place, it just kind of rolls over. Like if you see this thing here, I can't probably do it now with one hand, but you basically put it all into that housing and then you just sort of, it just falls into place. And if you keep that one bolt in, it kind of just rotates in there. Now, what I recommend doing is tightening this outer left one first, cause that'll hold the housing down. And then you can basically tighten the, the light to the housing. So the housing's permanent, but 
If you notice, my one, two, three connections are done. On the left, we have the gray one. That's the small connector. In the middle, we have that. It's off-white now, probably from age, but that's the big connector there. That one I found that it has to go, basically your black wire has to match the black wire on there. So there's you, there, if you plug it in wrong, it won't work. And then the resistor is there, which I haven't taped down with the double-sided tape yet. But I will do that, and I'll show you where I put that here in a second. Next is bolting this back up, though. Little teaser there before it's done. I uh, like to make sure it's all working. So you put the key to on. Don't start the car because it's up on the lift or lift it up and uh, testing the blinker there. And that's what it looks like. Isn't that cool? Definitely looks very, very modern as far as like a car. I mean, this is, you see this on Audis and all sorts of newer cars pretty often, but that's um, what it looks like on your Corvette now. So pretty, pretty slick. And after all this is done, uh, I'll, I'll show you at the end of the video here kind of what it looks like at night, in the day, kind of give you the full routine on it. So that is the final look. It's in. It's ready to be all buttoned up again. Let's go left to right here. Uh, we have the bolt on the left there, the screw that holds the housing to the fascia. We have the small light fitting there on the left. It's kind of black and white. We have the off-white, the big one there on the bottom. That's screwed in and done. Right above that is the spring. That's back installed the two bolts holding the new housing to the or the new light to the factory housing and then down there we have the resistor which i run and i can just stick right on top of there and i think that will hold right up there watch this let's put this up here it's right up there so there's our whole setup in there install is reverse order of the removal you put on the l-shaped piece first then you're followed up by the air dam snug everything up they're just those little metal retainers held in by screws it's nothing crazy but hey, it's held on since 1999 so it's done a pretty good job and that's it so let's get into some shots here of this uh at night and uh kind of show you what this looks like and what the functionality is i think it looks pretty darn good myself anytime you put new plastic light housings or whatever they are on these cars any car it looks better it's just less hazy even this thing with 40,000 miles it just ages and a nice shiny housing and add the led effect to it oh that's so nice very very cool and you have a different look up front because now it's tinted instead of white it almost matches there a little better i think but we'll see what it looks like driving all that's really left for me to do is lower the car carefully and remove the jack pox, and we should be good to go. But I wanted to show you what's left. You should have all these parts left. Um, obviously, the two stock housings, which I mean, I'll keep them in the box. They it just just in case, you know. I mean, these are if you look right there, they're very very cool looking. But at the same time, I mean, if you ever want to go back to original, you got them. And these are actually uh, GM parts, if that matters not saying they didn't make a quarter million of these plus but um yeah and then uh you should have four bulbs two of the big ambers two of the smallers and just to show you here's the tools i used if you're kind of looking at this and going what was that he had seven millimeter driver there like a screwdriver a whole set of those if you're very very handy for many many jobs especially these gm cars on the interiors because they use a uh, you know usually a headed uh, bolt like screw type thing not ever Phillips or anything it actually has like a like a bolt head on it and then uh, quarter inch drive seven millimeter very nice I don't think you could get to some of those bolts with a three-eighths drive I think you need this small swing small type socket there so that's what we got well, let's get out there and uh, film this guy at night and show you what what it does so before I get into the functionality, the blinkers, all that on these side markers, I wanted to show you a little bonus I didn't expect to happen here. Got my fob right here. So watch what happens when I hit unlock. That's pretty cool. And then if you lock it with the fob, same thing. It does a little flash like that. So let's do that one more time. We'll go to the side here. Unlock. 
Then you have the white in there. Lock. Pretty slick. What I'm going to do here next is let me set the camera up and I will uh, run you through the, the blinkers here, the turn signals, what those look like. So there they go, that is uh, full turn signal mode there, pretty slick, much cleaner than it looked before for sure. Let's go back a little bit, show you a side view, that's neat, I like that a lot. Next up here I'm going to start the car and show you what the daytime running lamps look like. I'll flip the headlights on, show you what happens with that, and then I'll also show you turn signals with it running uh, in the various modes. So here we go. Okay, so while running, we still have the amber uh, bulbs on there. The the like just like stock, but I mean it's definitely different. It just has a different look to it. And then when you notice, we put the headlights on, even the parking lights. This section here turned white and on right there. So that's pretty slick. I dig that a lot. And then the blinkers still continue to do their normal normal job with the turn signals there. I have not uh, taken it out yet, but I'm assuming that white down there at the bottom is going to add a little bit of help to the headlights, but we'll see. Very, very cool stuff. So overall on that install with the front corners, I mean the, the big positives on it are no wiring involved, just plug and play, and you get that a killer look. I mean, that's just awesome. The one negative I found is it you know, if you aren't slightly skilled and you have a, you know, mediocre set of tools, it's going to be a little tough. Just, you know, I, or if you are doing this, just watch this video and buy those exact tools I have and you'll be fine. I just worry that a lot of people pick these up and, you know, it's, it's going to end up being a little more difficult than what they're used to. It's not just like popping a bulb in or something. But at the same time, if you follow the instructions, you'll be fine. It's no, uh... No issues whatsoever, but there they are off now. I love these front corners. So much cleaner looking. They look like new, and they, they're just as glossy as the paint, and you have that killer LED look. So check out Vet Lights for those. I will put a link below. Big shout out to them for sending these by. I hope this video helped you out. If you liked it, give a thumbs up. If you want to see more on the Corvette here, the FRC, uh, let me know what you want to see, subscribe for more, and uh, we'll get it out there. So thanks for watching. Got more coming though. Got wheels figured out. Did a paint system here on it. That's why it's so shiny right now, and that'll be in another video coming soon. And uh, we're getting through it though. It's definitely uh, shaping up to be a really, really nice car. So thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Don't forget to check out Vet Lights for all your Corvette lighting needs.